Chapter 8, Learning Objective 5. Explain, calculate, and record the impairment of long-lived assets. Impairment is the write-down of an asset if the recoverable amount, or fair value less cost to sell, is less than the carrying amount, or net book value. Impairment can occur for a number of reasons, including obsolescence, economic downturn, or even physical disaster. When an impairment occurs, revised depreciation must be calculated. So let's refer to our January 1st, 2022 asset purchase once again. None of the assumptions have changed, so the purchase price was $20,000, the residual value was $2,000, and the estimated life was five years. If we use straight line depreciation, we calculated depreciation to be $3,600 per year, which accumulates to $7,200 after two years, resulting in a carrying value of $12,800. Now we introduce a new piece of information called the recoverable value or recoverable amount, which is $7,000 after the two years. We use that recoverable value to determine if there's any impairment. In this case, the carrying value of $12,800 exceeds the recoverable amount of $7,000. Therefore, the asset is said to be impaired by the difference, or $5,800. We record the impairment with a journal entry that debits an impairment loss expense account for $5,800 and credits the equipment asset for the same amount. Notice we don't credit accumulated depreciation here. The carrying amount now is $7,000 which is equal to the recoverable value, and now we can recalculate depreciation going forward or prospectively as the revised carrying value of $7,000 less the $2,000 residual because that hasn't changed, and divide by the three-year remaining life to end up with $1,667 per year in depreciation. Impairment losses can be reversed in subsequent years if the recoverable amount of the asset exceeds the carrying amount, but there are limitations and accounting for impairment recovery is beyond the scope of this course.